Guys, it's now September month. Um, I always like to get prepared for what's coming. I know late September, October, we get a lot of bonita that will start coming through, little frigates, um, bait fish basically that I like to use for when I go and fish for my other big flat fish, diamonds, raggy, stuff like that. So to catch my bait fish, this is a trace that I use for catching my bonnies. It's literally, at the end of the day, that's what it looks like once I've finished it. I'm going to show you how to make it. It's a yo-yo, a small little yo-yo, and this is what we're using for it. You can either use the 34007 stainless steel hook. Um, it works well, we've used it for years. It's a nice hook. Otherwise, you can use this tarpon hook that I use. It's a very, very good hook. I find it's a lot stronger. Um, it's a sharper hook than the 34007. It's more expensive, but you get more in the pack. Very, very good hook. It's a nice shape. Um, the bonnies don't seem to come off as easily. I've got my little red beads. These are little plastic beads that I use, especially if I'm using the, the clear Yamashita, and I'll show you how nicely it actually works with it. Okay, as far as uh, braid goes, 12.5 kilo Kingfisher fluorocarbon. Um, it comes in 25 meter rolls. This here is my hook snoot. So in other words, the part that comes off of the main line. My main line is done with 15 kilo fluorocarbon. Only because it's a lot stronger and I'm going to show you how to tie the knots for it. It works very similar to my old quarantine trace that I've been using. Um, it's a figure of eight. Um, hook link that comes off of it. I'm going to show you how to tie those two. A pair of mustard uh, split ring pliers, mustard braid scissors if you want to call it. There's three different variations that I make. The one is tied with our Kuta flasher and that's when we're traveling along and the fish are jumping all over the place. I use that quite often. The other one is done where the bonnies are down deep, I use one of these, but use your old ones, don't have to use brand new ones, use old ones. And if the bonnies are very skittish, I like to sometimes throw into them and pull a little spoon with a little Yamashita on it and you get one, one. And as you're going through, your other lines that are behind you seem to catch one. So before your lines even go away, I throw this, I get one fish out, put him on the deck and then the other lines go away. Okay, so that's that. Uh, number six power swivel okay that's just for the top of the trace and then of course our Yamashitas there's such variations in these it's up to you as an individual to choose the colors that you think work best and what I like to do is I like to make several different traces using them and if for instance they're eating clear then I'll change mine over to clear so I'll take the yo-yo rail off the ones that have got the clears on and obviously you catch a lot more or they could be eating reds if it's overcast conditions chartreuse if it's down deep with this over here so you make yourself a whole lot of different variations and find out which one works the best last year the white with the pink dot worked the best like i said before use your old lures one of those that swim the best i'm just going to use one of these new strike pros that we've got first thing you want to do is you want to take off the treble hooks and the reason being you don't want to hook a tuna or something like that. You're fishing strictly for bait. So we'll just take off these trebles quickly. Like you see over here. Okay, there we go. The one's off. I'll get the other one off quickly. Okay. So basically, it's a deep diver that you can pull fast that doesn't have any hooks on it. You don't want a tuna coming up and eating, it just buggers up your fishing. Okay, so there we go. We take our main line, which is our 15 kilo fluorocarbon. The first knot that we're gonna tie is gonna be about 30 centimeters away. So there we go. And how we do it is we tie a figure of eight. So we go one, two, like that. There's your figure of eight. 30 centimeters away, tie the second one. One, two. There's your figure of eight. 40 centimeters away. We tie the next figure of eight. One, two. There we go, there's a figure of eight. 
and you don't pull them tight guys 30 centimeters cut okay so that's your main line now we're going to take the 12 kilo fluorocarbon which is a lot thinner and obviously fluorocarbon becomes invisible in water and we're going to cut 30 centimeter pieces so we're going to cut two 30 centimeter pieces and one well three 30 centimeter pieces first one one and all we do is we just measure it out cut measure it out cut okay simple as that so at the bottom we're going to go through the figure of eight there we go take it twist it and go through the second part of the figure of eight give yourself a bit to work with we're going to tie a figure of eight on the back one two three take our tag end well not our tag end our main branch that comes off of it and start forming our figure of eight there's our figure of eight lubricate put the two as close as you can together and we pull tight that locks it in place cut off that little tag end over there okay grab another little piece here exactly the same thing we're going to go through there and back through that side okay Give yourself a bit to work with and you tie a figure of eight on again. Take this. Put the two together. Pull tight. And the last one is over there. So we go through once again. Pull it back through like that, forming a figure of eight. One, two, three times. <laughs> okay, hundred percent. Now the bottom one, we attach our lure and we just make a figure of eight. Okay. On the top one, we put our swivel, attach it with a figure of eight. Okay, so there's our top and there's our lure. I'm using my top and hooks. I'm just going to grab three of them out here. And the size that I'm using is size twos. One, two, three. Okay, and that's the top and hook, guys. It's flipping phenomenal. I'm telling you now. The more I use it, the more I'm loving this hook. I'm going to do it with a red Yamashita first. So I'm going to put a red one on the bottom, darker silhouette. I'm going to put a, let's see, I'll put an orange one on, and the last one I'm going to do with clear, and then I'm going to put one of those beads in it and show you the difference. Okay, so, take my branch on, and you can pretty much see what's happening. I'm going to stick that in there. There's your lure going along, that comes out, the next one comes out above it, over there, so you can pretty much see what I'm actually trying to achieve here. Okay, so let's get a red one. These Yamashitas are unbelievable in the water. They actually glow like you can't believe. That one is actually a fluorescent color when it goes into the water. Can't see it here under these lights. But under normal lights, that thing actually glows. And this is a clear. 
A lot of times those little bonnies, frigates, stuff like that, are eating little sprats. And if you know a sprat is almost see-through, those little anchovies, those little sprats that you get in the water, those little eels that you might get. Okay, so there's the Yamashitas. All three of them that I'm going to be using. I'm going to grab one of these little beads out at the same time while I'm actually working on it. There we go, okay. Okay, to start off with, the easiest way to do it is to take your Yamashita and just trim the nose off, just a little bit. Make it square like that. What it does is it actually makes it shake like this in the water. There we go. And this little clear one, if you look at it, it's actually got a aurora in it, which is that like oil kind of color. See how it shines in the light. And that most probably is my favorite one out of all of them. Look at that aurora color. Unbelievable. Okay. Uh, take a hook in the nose piece in the center just stick it through so you actually create a little bit of a hole you can use a needle if you want but I'll just use the same hook that I'm going to be using and if you have a look at the clear one and you're coming close you can actually see where the hook goes through you just want to break that rubber so you can stick the nylon through it. That's what you're trying to achieve basically. Otherwise sometimes it can be very, very difficult to get the, the line through it. But fluorocarbon's nice, it's very hard. Okay, there's our red one. The hardest part is actually trying to find the hole. There we go. Quite easily it went through. Okay. Because I've made a hole in the plastic, you don't want the eye of the hook to go through it. So we just take one of our beads, stick it on, and that's just a stopper. That's all it's there for. You can use any color you want. But I find the, the red ones, when it comes to the clear beads or a chartreuse color, works extremely well. To tie the hook on, figure of eight. One, two, three. By the time you've finished doing all the tying and stuff like that, you find that this little hook snoot is about 20 centimeters in length. Okay, you don't want to make them too long. You don't want them moving all over the place. So now we just slide that down. Change it like so. There we go. So that's basically what we're achieving. And we're going to do that all the way up, playing with different colors. Here comes the second one. There we go, found the hole. There we go. A little red bead through it. And of course our hook. One, two, three times. Give it a little bit of a pull there to make sure it sits properly. Okay, again. How nice does that one look? Okay. Last but not least, my clear one. My favorite one out of all of them. Take the little red bead, and this is why I like these little red beads. I'll show you now once I stick it in there. Okay. okay. Look at this. Stick a little red bead in there, and it almost looks like gills. Look at that. That lovely aurora color flashing around, that red that stands out. I tell you what, this little one by far outfishes all the rest of them. Like I said, you've got chartreuse if you want. You get them in different sizes. This is a 1.5, which is slightly bigger. Later on in the season, 
you'll find that the bonnies, the frigates, like a bigger bait or little, those little anchovies, those little sprats have actually become a lot bigger. You can see the size difference in it. This is 1.2, that's 1.5, just a little fraction bigger. And it makes a big difference. Those bonnies and frigates can be so pedantic on what they're feeding on. If you don't have the right size, they just don't seem to want to feed. Okay, so there we go. Okay, so let me show you what it looks like at the end of the day. So that's basically what you've got. You'll have this one coming out over there. You'll have this one out over there. And then, of course, that one over there. And you'll be trawling back there. So that's basically what you've got. None of these are going to tangle. And that's it. It's as simple as that. So if you're trawling, You'd have two of these on the back of the boat, at the transom, so you'll have one on the left, one on the right. In the centre, you would have one tied with this. Oh yeah, let me just show you how that one's done. Let's just open this quickly. There's just so many variations that you can do. And if there's a lot of bigger bonnies around, and you don't mind catching those one kilo, two kilo bonnies, you just take that off. You then stick that through the center over there there we go I'll just take a 3-0 in my top and hook this is just in case you want to catch a bigger fish while you're out there a bigger bunny maybe you want to smoke it or a frigate or a cider or something like that Put a bigger hook on To the back now this one you'd run in the center just behind the wake of the boat there it is there and again I'll just show you what it looks like I'm gonna put that over there so this will be bouncing along the surface with your left hand side and right hand side ones running deep now of course this will be on the surface with these little things bouncing around behind it okay sorry the red one goes over there okay so this one would be in the center, left hand side you'd have the deep diver, right hand side you'd have a deep diver. Okay, next I'm going to show you another variation that we use, which would be that, with a little spoon on it. So all we're doing now is taking our little spoon that we've got, a little silver spoon, there's different variations that you can use, little snook spoons, anything like that. Okay, so all it has is one single Yamashita on it with a little swivel. Take your light rod, see the bunnies or the frigates jumping over there or on the surface, you throw into them, start pulling your spoon and invariably they'll eat that one or they'll eat this one. That's as simple as that. Or if the fish are down deep and you're drifting along, you take this down to the bottom and you work it up and the frigates and the bonnies will jump on it as well. So do the siders. That's just a little casting one from off the boat. That's all it is. So there we go guys. Summer coming up. You want to catch bait for your cooter or for rock and surf purposes. Those are the traces that we use for when we want to try and catch ponies and frigates here off Durban. Very simple, very quick and easy to do. Best thing you can do is get a yo-yo like that. Obviously they get tangled up like this, they end up all getting tangled. Put them on a little yo-yo. We sell them at Kingfisher. They cost next to nothing. They're about 15 rand around there. And it keeps it nice and tidy as you can see. So all you need to do is basically take the first one off, which would be this one here. Where's the second one? There's the second one. You un undo that one. And then, of course, the third one. And you just go like this. There's the main branch of it. Unravel, unravel. Ah, got me. Unravel. And quick and easy. There we go. There's a swivel ready to fish okay just show you once again how to put them on take it like that if 
find your little loop over here stick it in there and then all you do is you just wrap it around first one on there it goes going 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 the second one just hook him in there and then of course your third one coming up now So gently. There we go. And that goes in there. There we go. And then you just store it in your box. You can have your four or five different colors of each one that you want. And eventually when you figure out what they're feeding on, there we go. Simple as that. Enjoy. Tight lines, guys.